guys and welcome back to our channel. Have you heard about DeFi, decentralized finance? Have you heard about CeFi, centralized finance? In this video, we will talk about these two main financial sectors, decentralized and centralized. What are the differences? What are similarities? How can you distinguish and how can you make use of each one of them in the next few minutes? But first of all, this video is for educational purposes, well, it's not financial advice. And without any further ado, let's just dive deep into the topic. So guys, we start with DeFi, decentralized finance, what it is and how it works. Well, as you can see here, centralized finance is an emerging financial technology based in secure distributed ledgers similar to those used by cryptocurrencies. Decentralized means that it doesn't rely on a central means of arrangement or operation. It's decentralized. It's scattered all over the place. And that gives it actually quite a substantial amount of power to be used Used without interruption. In the US, the Federal Reserve and Security and Exchange Commission SEC defines the role of centralized financial institutions like bank and brokerage and so on, which customers rely on to access capital and financial services directly. DeFi challenges this centralized financial system by empowering individuals with peer-to-peer -peer digital exchanges. And as I told you, that's the power of decentralized. You don't have to rely on a centralized unit or a centralized governing agent for that no you can just rely on peer to peer and that can also be challenging for regulations and so on and DeFi eliminates the fees that bank and other financial institutions and companies charge for using their services individual hold money in a secure digital wallet and can be transferred into another wallet or into your peer to peer wallet and with ease as well as long as you have internet connection you can just start using it no matter where you are no matter how far you are from each other you can just start using using it with relative ease and it eliminates the fees and that's one of the most important aspects for uh, for using decentralized finances but what's a cfi centralized finance well a cfi here on the other hand that can be described as one of the fundamental concept of cryptography DeFi, of course that's a decentralized finance but the cfi is a framework that seeks to provide cryptocurrency investment options that combines some advantages of the DeFi as well and the usability and security of conventional financial institution so we can summarize that cfi centralized finances is a process where you Users can acquire loans and earn interest and buy and sell cryptocurrency or exchange cryptocurrency using a centralized in institution. So you're using cryptocurrency, which is decentralized, but using a centralized institution for your financial security. And this is usually a centralized exchange, a CEX. As you can see here, the CEX, the financial exchange, the CEX, that can be institutions that offer yields on crypto as well. So this will aim to make financial services as effective and economical as possible while maintaining fair exchange during crypto transactions meaning that the fees will be as minimum as possible sometimes it's even completely eliminated but it's regulated and it's also centralized so cfi allows users to borrow money trade and use cryptocurrency debit cards to make purchases and receive awards and even more than that more 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 perks and benefits for cfi so what are the key differences DeFi versus cfi how to distinguish between them and and how to make the best out of both worlds, I would say. Well, the decentralized finance differs from the traditional centralized finance of course as we talked about it the centralized finance here that can be money is held by banks and third parties and these facilitate the movement of money and they charge you uh, they charge you a percentage of fees of course and the credit card ch starts charging you once you start using it and kind of paying to the merchant so they can sometimes take chunks of your amount of money or the amount due but with a decentralized finance the financial el that's eliminated completely the intermediacies between merchants and users so that can be quite beneficial and that can also be in the benefit of the customer and in the, in the benefits of merchant but actually the best of two worlds or kind of regulated by the two concepts there is always a solution for these two concepts to coexist and as i told you here kyc know your customer that's also a procedure that can be used by major exchanges binance or whatever you can find that the k 
KYC is a procedure is often required before you can start using trading platform or an exchange platform to know your location, to know your if you're doing anything unlawful, to avoid any money laundering. It's kind of a regulation to avoid any potential harm to the financial system or to individuals as well. So it's kind of putting legal limitations to the use of crypto or the use of a DeFi, but within the coverage and umbrella of a CFI as well. So that's how to combine both and that's how to understand how both are working. They're both coexisting, but still some understanding between the two is still in development, of course. And day by day, there are a lot of advancement in the DeFi and CFI and how they interact and how they coexist with each other. So guys, let's talk about the future of DeFi. What to expect in the future? As you can see here, the decentralized finance is constantly evolving and it's unregulated and it's also the economic system can be riddled with infrastructural misbehaves, hacks and scams. Of course, unfortunately, it's unavoidable to have some scam projects here and there in any system, in any kind of financial concept. But here with DeFi as well, people might need to be extremely careful because there are a lot of scams out there. The current laws are created and based on the idea of separate financial restrictions here, each with its own set of laws and rules. The DeFi borderlessness and kind of without any limitation transaction, that presents an essential question for these type of regulations. And this can present also who is responsible for investigating a financial crime that occurs across borders or protocols and DeFi apps. Of course, there are a lot of misbehaves here and there, but how you can enforce regulations and how to enforce them correctly and on whom and how to track who did what. So that can currently presents a lot of challenges, but the other concerns also include the system stability, energy requirement, carbon footprint, of course, for the environmental aspect and the system upgrade, system maintenance and hardware failures. All of these aspects need to be understood need to be considered and need to be also improved and regulated in the future so everyone is kind of hand in hand trying to bring the best out of the DeFi and also try to limit or kind of try to get the misbehaves to a minimum and put certain regulations to avoid any hiccups or any misbehaviors using such a technology such a brilliant technology as DeFi. So guys, in a nutshell, we talked about DeFi and CeFi, decentralized finance and centralized finance. We kind of gave an overview of what to expect and how to understand each of them. So I would highly recommend you to check the links down below, understand it a bit more, invest some more time into grasping the whole idea and you will find yourself more and more interested because the financial revolution is coming either way. So it's better for you to be prepared with information. So as usual, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, leave any comment you might have in the comment section down below and till next time. Bye-bye.